Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This one is a little bit different. Uh, it's not an editing video, but it is a video about the camera gear and the audio gear that we use on a daily basis uh, for Tim and I at Lumiere Productions shooting documentary work. So we shoot a lot of run and gun documentary work where just a single camera operator on an easy rig is running around with an audio guy with an audio bag receiving a boom signal and a bunch of wireless lavalier mics. So one thing to keep in mind is that this is from the perspective of documentary run and gun style work, where it's cinema verite, where it's basically turning up to a scene, working with some talent with a director and really just capturing um, the content that's in front of you. The first thing that we'll talk about is the camera. So every camera operator obviously likes to rig their camera out differently. This is set up in a generic way uh, Tim would rig it out differently to how I would rig it out. Um, but just the ability with a rig like this to hold it in different positions. We'd primarily be using the easy rig attachment on the top, but being able to hold it in the arm here is a really nice way to operate for short periods of time. It does get heavy like this, but especially if you need to take it off the easy rig, get down on the ground, get all sorts of different angles, that's a really nice option. And then once it's on the easy rig, having a handle off to the side here is another great option. So the point of a documentary rig, in my opinion, is the ability to be flexible and to be able to move between one shot to another as quick as possible. So having a camera rigged out for a variety of purposes is great. And so things like internal NDs are really important. You can manage the exposure. This is the Ursa G2. Internal NDs, um, being able to shoot 120 frames per second, 4.6K RAW is awesome. Now we've got a manual follow focus here, which is great if you're just a single operator. We've also just ordered the DJI LiDAR system, so it'd be fun to experiment with autofocus. We have a matte box at the front. We can have a polarizer filter, as well as two stages of either ND or something like a Promus filter in the front. Another key, is the ability to transmit wireless video. Because we're a really small crew, just Tim and I sometimes, it's really nice if I can help direct the camera and vice versa. So having the image on the sound bag allows me to direct. And obviously a key with the transmission system is giving the director the ability to see the frame as well. So we've just got another monitor. This has actually got a V mount on it with the full cage and a couple of handles. So this is great for the director or the client. That works really well. Now the lens is probably the most important thing when it comes to the actual image. The image quality, the sharpness, the ability to focus and zoom in a parfocal manner. So the Diesel Film 20 to 55 is probably our most commonly used lens. There are times where we need something a little bit longer, like a 70 to 200 but often we're picking up those shots with a second camera rather than re-rigging out um, our primary rig. The other great thing is it also is a PL mount onto the camera, so it's really rigid and there's no play in the lens between the lens and the camera, and so it just means all your focus and your matte box is just nice and solid. Without getting stuck in the weeds too much, um, a couple of other notes on the camera. It's really nice to keep the operator side clean so there's nothing rigged out here. You can see there's a lot of rigging components on that side, but on this side, it's just nice and clean. When it's up on the shoulder, it allows the operator to obviously pull focus and have space there. Sometimes on the easy rig, I really like to hug the camera. Having the operator side nice and clean allows me to do that. A camera like this is heavy, but the beautiful thing about a heavy camera is that all of the movements, especially handheld movements, become nice and um, smooth, not completely smooth like a stabilized shot, but there's no like micro jitters that you find in smaller, lighter cameras. Some people hate big cameras and that's totally fine. It all depends on the type of work that you're shooting. We do a lot of corporate documentary work where everyone is aware that there's a camera crew there. And so when we turn up with a slightly bigger camera, people aren't necessarily off put by that, but if you're shooting a sensitive story where you obviously want to keep a low profile, this might not be the build for you. Just a quick note on media. 
When we're recording, we do use this SSD caddy and it takes these 2.5 inch SSDs. These are the Samsung Evos. Now these have worked great for us. They're really cheap for the amount of storage that you get. I think a one terabyte costs probably a tenth of the price of an Angelbird equivalent. You're obviously taking more of a risk using an off-brand memory card designed for computers rather than cameras. So something to keep in mind. To be honest, in the early days, we were like most camera operators, just obsessed with the camera, obsessed with image quality. And I think as we've matured in our filmmaking and our storytelling, we've realized that audio is probably the most underrated aspect of any great film. You can have a relatively average camera, average image quality, but if your audio sounds amazing, then it will instantly elevate your work if the audio and the story is great. So that's where this bag comes in. One really important thing to keep in mind is I am not an audio expert. Tim's not an audio expert. So this is an audio bag build out from the perspective of a camera operator that has realized audio is important. On the camera side, we have a Rode NTG 4 Plus shotgun mic front. This is just on a simple magic arm so we're able to position this wherever we need to this is a great scratch redundancy this is going into a wireless transmitter so this is transmitting into the audio bag and then on the receiving end we're actually receiving a mix down from the audio bag from all of the audio sources and this is going into channel one into the camera often what some people do is put this shotgun mic straight into the camera. But as an audio mixer, I really love the ability to actually receive the signal back in the sound bag and mix that in to all of the other lav mics and the other booms and then transmit that scratch into the camera. So this is the Orca 332. If you look at the pockets on the inside, we've got the main compartment for our Zoom F8N Pro audio recorder. We've then got another compartment for two Deity Theos wireless receivers. This is running four channels of wireless lav audio into the recorder. In this compartment, we've also got an SPD-1 power distribution from Deity. This is powering everything in the bag. And then in the front compartment, we have space for a timecode slate. Now on the front of the bag, we've got two magic arms on one clamp which allows us to clamp both the phone holder and the video screen. So this video screen is the DJI Highbright monitor receiving the transmission from the camera. This is just a small rig clamp. This bag has a rigid aluminium frame in it. Because it's solid, we're able to clamp this down onto the frame and then run two magic arms off. And you can see how rigid it is, it's really solid. When you're jumping around with the bag, moving around, these two screens are very solid on the bag. At the front of the bag, um, I like to just put the transmitters that we're using for the shoot just at the front so I can distribute them, give them to a talent, lav them up, and then when they come back, I can just clip them on the front. That's nice and handy, we can fit our four transmitters at the front. And inside this front pocket here is where we just hold a bunch of accessories. I've got some pens for the slate. I've got spare batteries. And then the main heart and soul of this front pocket is these two S95 smart batteries. These smart batteries power the entire bag. But one really key thing when you're on a documentary shoot is you just want reliable gear. You want things just to work. And you don't want to have to be constantly maintaining batteries across all your devices. So these batteries pipe into the SPD-1 power distribution. This power distributor has two different circuits. The first circuit runs all of our receivers and the recorder, and the second circuit runs all of the transmitters. It also, out of a USB port at the top, can charge my phone. With those two batteries, I could power the bag probably for 15, 16 hours, no problems. So another key component about audio on a documentary shoot is to be able to communicate scratch audio to the camera. Also communicate to the camera operator if you're doing directing a little bit more. But primarily you're also giving a wireless transmission to the director or the producer or the client. From the mix, we have two individual transmitters here. We give one of the 
mono transmission lines to the camera operator. And then the second mono line can be uh, a clean feed of a mix down of everything happening and that can just be sent to the client and the director producer. On the left hand side of the bag here we have a road link receiver and this is receiving an XLR transmitter. So we can plug this into a boom or any XLR feed and essentially receive that there. So this is routed into the bag into channel 8. You can see we've just got a 3.5 going into the bag as well as power getting received from the power distro. I've got little attachments for headphones. I've also got an XLR cable routed into channel 7. Now if this boom receiver fails for whatever reason I can quickly whip out an XLR. Sometimes for long form interviews I like to use an XLR anyway. It's just a more secure connection and over here we've just got a little tool case. Scissors, we cut tape a lot when we're laving people up. Pen for the slate and then a couple of extra pens. On the right hand side we've just got a couple of extra tools here. These are a few small Nipex tools. These are probably my favourite tools in the whole world. Some wire clippers. These are great for cutting the aerials for uh, the receivers. They're also great for zip ties, cable ties, that sort of thing. This is a spanner. Great for clamping down on camera equipment. We've also just got another spanner with a cobra head. Between these three tools and the scissors, I can cover most of my bases with camera rigging. We do have another case full of tools as well if we need to, but this is great just to have on the bag. The next thing that I'm definitely going to buy for this bag is a proper three-point harness. But what we've been using recently is simply this uh, leather strap. This is called a money maker and you'll see wedding photographers using these a lot. This is Tim's old wedding photography harness and it's basically just designed as a sling with uh, two attachment points. Normally you'd have two cameras hanging off the side, but what we can do with this is clip it in. You do get all of the weight in your shoulders, which after a long day, you definitely start to feel. I can operate anything in the bag like this. I can pull out the slate, change the markings on the slate. I'll go take two. I can slate the camera quite easily like this, mark that, and then that just places back in the bag. The main reason you want to be holding the bag is to be able to boom at the same time. So from the bag, you can boom. Oftentimes when I'm booming, what I'm actually booming is a slightly different audio source from what Tim is capturing. Depending on the shot, sometimes the camera is actually a lot closer to the action and it actually is closer in getting an, a better audio source from this shotgun mic than what I could actually get with the boom, especially if we're shooting really wide. Because it's so wide, it's really hard to get that boom close to the subject. So it's really great being able to mix this in to the bag and then also mix this. And then in addition to these two mics, we've got the ability for four uh, lavalier mics. So when we're filming, I'm obviously recording audio, booming, and in between takes, if we need to slate or clap a scene, I can just stand this pole up, pull the slate out of the bag. Let's just say take four really nice just been able to pop that back in the side of the bag and then I can obviously slate the camera. Now one really key thing about recording audio on set is managing time code between the camera and then the audio recorder. As an additional redundancy we use these TC1 time code boxes. We've got one on the audio recorder, we've also got one on the camera and these sync the camera and the audio recorder together. As a redundancy there's obviously time code readout on the digital slate as well. So for whatever reason, if one of these fail, if this fails on the camera, but the camera visually sees this in the frame, then we can still maintain sync. Worst case scenario, if the sync all fails, we have a third redundancy, which is the scratch audio mix that is actually getting sent into the camera recording with the original visuals. 
without getting too detailed into these deity Theos transmitters and receivers, this lavalier pack that I'm using right now to record this video, I'm actually transmitting this into the bag itself. So this Zoom f 8 Pro is recording this lav, but there is a secondary recording in this actual unit itself to a micro SD card. So every single lavalier mic that we're receiving has a local recording on the person. It also has a recording in the Zoom f 8 Pro. It has another recording in the camera and these transmitters that are transmitting the signal to the camera and to the director, they are actually recording in these units itself as well. So there's a lot of redundancy here, which is nice, gives me peace of mind. So that is a high level view of the camera and audio setup. We found a really nice flow where Tim is operating the camera a lot more on the easy rig. I'm here on the audio bag, gathering audio, booming, doing a little bit of directing with Tim. And between these two, we can actually achieve a huge amount on set. Now, one last thing to show you, which we carry around with us. It has a bunch of cases for different purposes. We've got all of our batteries in here. We've got a bunch of audio cable accessories, a case full of transport medical tape. This is great tape for rigging up labs onto different people. This lav kit case has a bunch of fluffies and different um, rigging accessories for putting lavaliers on different people. We've got time code cables. We've got a bunch of spare antennas for the receivers and transmitters in here. We've got a bunch of walkie-talkie comms, which I'll hand out to crew if we're working with multiple crew. Tim has one of these on his easy rig, which we can communicate uh, throughout the day with. And over here we have our lavaliers, a bunch of different transmitters, time code boxes. The great thing about this setup is if I do pull something out and use this lavalier, for example, when it gets deployed, I just simply turn that over. So it's a really simple organizational tool to know at the end of the day that I've got these six units out and I need to return them into the case. So that's the basis of the audio setup. So we've got a simple case. We've got the sound bag. We've got a boom pole, a shotgun mic, a blimp and a fluffy. And this here is all the audio setup that I use. This is audio based on the perspective of coming from camera side. So I'm learning stuff every single day. If you see stuff in here that you would love to let me know how to do better, I would be all ears because I'm trying to improve what I do every day. We're in the process of looking at uh, better boom poles, better shotgun mics. Um, but at the moment, this is a video of where we're at. On the camera side, it's very simple. It's just the camera. We do use an Easy Rig Vario 5. I've got a video about this already on the channel, but essentially the Easy Rig with this camera system here, a simple C stand which has the director's monitor, and also when we're doing a long form interview, it's got the ability to hold the boom pole as well, just to boom out for the interview for long takes. I hope this was helpful in some way, just to give you an idea of sort of where we're at as a production company shooting documentary work, and hopefully there was a few things in here that answered a few of your questions. For now, that's the end of this video. If you do have questions, please comment in the comment box below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.